Hey, how's it going, everyone? My name is Derek Afasi. I'm the owner of Afasi Financial Group. Today's topic I want to discuss with you, life income options fully explained, and explain the process when somebody's looking for retirement and how to essentially receive maximized retirement income, and most importantly, avoid the mistakes that individuals make that could run that risk of outliving your accounts. So in a perfect scenario, someone might be, you know, have been placing their dollars towards Social Security and they understand that they could either pull out Social Security at age 62 of a reduced benefit, uh, maybe their full retirement age might be 66 for that full benefit that they're receiving on their Social Security statements, or if they wait till age 70, they're going to have a larger benefit than obviously if they took it before 66 and 62. So this type of income is essentially going to be a type of lifetime income um, that would be going to uh, husband and wife. Now, when the one spouse passes away, then the next spouse, would, the remaining spouse would receive the higher of those two amounts. Uh, there has been modifications to Social Security. It's always going to be uh, essentially occurring. So just make sure that you're aware of what the um, what the current Social Security uh, ma uh, planning strategies are right now, and then also what your income will be at that those specific uh, dates and time at those specific ages. But the 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 good thing about Social Security is that it, it you have to look at it mainly as an asset. You have to look at it as a type of income that would be going to you for the rest of your life. So you understand every single year that you're living, you're receiving a type of retirement paycheck year by year by year. And that's essentially how a pension plan works. A pension plan is was a type of retirement account that an individual was working for a company. And this company stated that as long as you work for us for X amount of years, we're going to place monies aside and essentially pay you back in a type of lifetime income, uh, retirement income distribution as your benefit, as your retirement benefit. So if somebody has Social Security income and pension income, they understand that as long as once they've deemed retired and they've, you know, Social Security, they've sufficed those certain years, the pension, they suffice those certain years, they're receiving two main sources of income that are coming to them, you know, year by year. Now, unfortunately, a lot of individuals are not offered pension plans. So about 80, 90 percent of individuals are not offered pension plans and therefore uh, forces them into making their own decision. And they have this big question mark in retirement. And this is where the risks to outlive your accounts are, you know, uh, amplified, to say the least, because of the fact that the education is by the wayside. Individuals don't know how to properly pull out these accounts and then essentially how to grow these accounts to make sure that they're maximized so that they can out not outlive their money so that they're not pulling out too much off of an account that is too small. So when we're going over the risks to outliving your accounts, I want you to think of it in the form of a type of 401k account or a type of IRA account. The reason why I'm using this example is because these are going to be the most two, co the two most common uh, types of retirement accounts. So a way that these buckets grow is your uh, person is working for a company and this employer is saying, OK, listen, we're going to offer you a type of uh, a type of plan, a type of retirement account that's deemed a qualified retirement account known as a 401k that you could place money aside a percentage of your salary into this type of bucket that's also going to be tied through mutual funds dependent upon the fund manager that we choose. So what happens is it's the dollars that the person is placing in that's going to grow this bucket. But most importantly, it's the interest credit that's going to come back based upon these mutual funds that are going to determine whether or not this bucket's going to be larger at the end of the day, end of the year, or smaller at the end of the day, end of the year. So you could have some times where the market's up and those mutual funds are tied to the market. It's a mixture of stocks and bonds that, you know, you're throwing in hundreds of thousands of dollars into your account. You're receiving positive interest credits. Now, the downside to it is whenever this market goes down and when you're looking at lifetime income or you're looking at income options for your retirement, what you want to do is eliminate those negatives as much as possible. You want to, to first observe what those negatives are and then eliminate them either all entirely or at least throw some guarantees onto your types of accounts to receive that type of lifetime income option, that type of Social Security income, that type of pension income. And there's ways on how you could do that with those existing accounts, with those 401k related accounts, and it allows you to roll them over into specifically designed IRA contracts that provide you that lifetime income. So if we're honing in on the risks of a 401k, it goes through something that I typically discuss and I talk about. It's called reverse dollar cost averaging. And what it says is you don't want to take money from an account that could potentially go down and then also that's hindered with negatives with certain fees. So if we look at that 401k growth or that IRA growth as a bucket, 
you have fees that are associated with that bucket. You have 401k related fees, you have mutual fund related fees. If you go to a financial advisor, typically those advisors are going to charge you something known as a wrap fee or an advisor fee. Um, so all these different combination of fees, your accounts, your mutual fund performance has to at least beat out what those fees are just for you to break even. So if you we incorporate those two sets of fees, um, and then we also incorporate downward market loss. Well, now there's three things that are having a compound effect. So kind of think of it like a uh, like, like a compound uh, spiral effect that's working in a negative direction um, against your account. So if you go and let's say you have mutual fund related fees and advisor fees of about 2%, and then the market goes down 50% in a given year, like it did in 2008, or we'd even just say 10% in a given year, well, you're going to be receiving that downward market loss and then also on top of it, you're going to have to pay those fees. When you're trying to pull out income from those accounts, that's the fourth negative, and that's the big kicker because that's what will, could prevent you from um, from living your retirement dollars with confidence, to, to be secure, to be confident that as long as I'm going, I'm taking out X amount of thousands of dollars per year, you know, I could just live my life. I could enjoy my retirement. I could visit my grandkids. I could, I could go travel, whatever the case may be. The, the important aspect I'm trying to hit home with you guys is saying, tr make sure that you at least have your lifetime income plan set up successfully. If you know that your expenses are X amount of thousands of dollars and you might have Social Security and a pension income coming to you, but maybe you have a $12,000 gap or a $20,000 gap from what your calculations are, well, rather than risk all your money into those types of variable accounts that could potentially go down and you're going to have to get hit with fees, there's ways that you could set them up into specifically designed IRA contracts that don't have mutual fund related fees, that are not charged advisor fees, you do not have any downward market loss, and the income that would come to you would be lifetime income, very similar to how a pension plan works, and it goes off of a personal pension plan aspect. So the you know the the very last thing i want to discuss is the cash flow maximization for lifetime income. and what it says is is that with retirement planning and investments everything's just a big game of leverage if you have x amount of thousands of dollars in your account you do not want to place everything from that account into a type of lifetime income guarantee or a type of lifetime income generating product if it's not going to correlate to your goals, if it's not going to correlate to your income. So if somebody has $500,000 that's sitting in a 401k account and they have a gap of, let's say, $20,000 and they understand that they're going to retire in two years, well, there's a way you could take that 401k, roll it over into an IRA, a specifically designed IRA contract. Maybe over that $500,000, it's only going to cost you $235,000 to produce that $20,000 lifetime income number. So then all the remaining dollars could now be sitting in those 401k accounts, could now be risked towards those variable accounts, and you could utilize that as your fund money. Anytime the market goes up, great. You know, I could go on vacation this year. Anytime the market goes down, well, at least I'm not stressing because I have those different income plays set up properly. And that's one of the things that my company does on a daily basis, and we try to help individuals hone in on what their lifetime income options are so that they're getting confident, they're getting certain in an at an uncertain time. You know, they're able to see exactly what are the best product lines and the best strategies to make sure if they're leveraging their dollars, what are the benefit? What's the incentive from the company that's giving that offer? What are the pros? What are the cons? And that is how you get from point A to point B successfully, especially in your retirement. You know, regarding retirement, you have to think of it as, you know, getting on an airplane. You have to think of it as, as your livelihood. You know, if you have a chance, a 50-50 chance of getting on an airplane and getting to your destination successfully, you're not going to do that strategy. You're not going to get on that airplane. That's the same way you have to take your retirement and your retirement income at that matter. So with all of our types of programs, we make sure that on average, an individual that calls our office, we go through over 1,200 different scenarios and product lines before we give our top three recommendations. The most important aspect is that you get educated first and foremost. You understand what you have. You understand what your goals are and then how to accomplish those goals successfully. One of the things that uh, that we pride ourselves on is our A-plus rate on the Better Business Bureau. We're A-plus rated. We've always had very good reviews. We've never had any complaints. And it's because of their methodical process. We're trying to educate first and foremost and make sure that we're able to place you in the best strategies and product lines that are particular to your age, to your goals. So at any point in time, if you found value in this video, feel free to give our 1-800 number a call. It's 1-800-566-1002. Once again, my name is Derek Afasi. I'm the owner of Afasi Financial Group. Um, make sure to subscribe.
subscribe to our YouTube channel, Retire Sharp, so you can have access to the most updated videos. Thanks so much, guys.